In Latin, idem means the same. Idem, the same. Identitas, sameness, identity. In philosophy, identity is defined as the fact of being the same and staying the same through time. Well, reading this makes me want to challenge it. What makes us unique is our ability to be plural, to be many things. Identity cannot be identified once and for all because it's about a long creative process, which is a lifetime's work. Now, who am I? What am I? I'm a collection of several parts of myself. Some have been given, others have chosen, and all I've experienced so far. I am also what I'm in process of becoming. My personal identity is still a work in progress. I have the same essence, the same core, but I am not continuously the same person. 14,928 days ago, I was born. I have certainly not been the same person every single day. Born in Casablanca, raised here in Marrakesh, I am Mulrit Ben Sahrawi. I am this name. I've been given as well. My ancestors from my father's side are Mauritanian and Afro-Andalusian on my mother's side. I haven't done a DNA test, but if I did, I'm convinced it would be a rainbow of origins. So genes have shaped my appearance, my morphology, this body that's my vessel. These same genes, they gave me my curly hair, the color of my skin, and a mother tongue, a language that I have learned naturally, because I am also a memory, and I am a brain. So I am this body, and this memory, and this brain. But not only that, we are collections of several parts of ourselves. Here in Marrakesh, my childhood took place in Arslimash, at the edge of Sham Elfna Square. And when I was seven, we moved to the neighborhood of Simrelia, where my parents still live, by the way. A childhood in Marrakesh, and in Morocco in general, is quite an experience, full of lessons. From a working-class family, my parents raised me in a pragmatic way. They have taught me that I always have the possibility to choose freely, as long as I'm able to be responsible for my own choices. I've understood that even if we cannot change the context, we can always find, choose the best way to live with it. I've always been very curious about the way people act and behave. As I'm sure many of you have done, during my teenage years, I gathered here and there different aspects that attracted me in people around me. With what I've been given and what I've chosen, my personal identity is like a building in construction. There is the foundation that we don't, that we can't choose, and then there are all sorts of building materials that we acquire in order to build up this construction. At a very early age, we start to shape the building. With the mind, we imagine, we draw, we gather, we structure, and we get rid of what is not for us anymore. Back to 1997, when I left Marrakesh, I spent six years in Rabat at the architecture school, which was a turning point in my life for two main reasons. First, because studying architecture triggers an open-mindedness towards our perception of space and of ourselves within it. Second reason is that it forced me to make a choice, to leave architecture and try to exist through music, which was not an easy path. <laughs> Indeed, facing the uncertainty related to music industry, 
coupled to the pressure coming from my close circle for whom abandoning architecture made nonsense, I felt the need to decide for myself and no one else. So when I let music become my path, it opened my perspective and pushed me to learn a new way of being. Being a musician gifted me with travel, encounters, exchanges. Being a musician is a blessing. It is a chance to write and sing who you are, a chance to express your identity. As you probably know, an album is for an artist a reflection of herself or himself in a specific period of time. It is like a season in your life that joins together emotions, memories, dreams and doubts that fit into a particular moment. For an artist, an album is the sound version of herself or himself. It is an ID card. In 2013, when Soul of Morocco was released, it was my third album, but actually the first one with an international audience. So through that album, I had to present myself to the world. Here, Soul of Morocco's cover. At first glance, it shows the colors of an African Amazir Morocco that you can even recognize from the other side of the Mediterranean Sea as the flavor of Morocco. But I want to share a secret with you. See this outfit and these accessories they are not really Moroccan. This is a garment I bought from an antique dealer here in the Medina of Marrakech. It mesmerized me from the first glance, and I knew I was going to use it for this album's cover. A few months later, I was in Istanbul in the Grand Bazaar, and I discovered by chance that it's an outfit, traditional outfit from some Uzbek tribes. Isn't that funny? What about the necklace, whose origins are Indian? and the bracelets from Cairo, and the red feather I took from a Venetian mask. People need to see what they think they know. But I didn't mean to trick anyone. Actually, since I started making music, I've always been pushed to categorize it, and not having an answer was for a while a struggle. So I tried with Soul of Morocco to just go beyond all this and make my eclectic music, summing up my collection of inspirations from Morocco and from elsewhere. A collection of sensations drawn in my homeland, these also I've been given without asking. Not to forget that in the same collection are also my personal references, those that I have chosen, from gospel to 90s pop, Afro-Cuban music, jazz, and so on. So this aggregation stands for a mosaic that I wanted to call Soul of Morocco, my soul, as I bear it, as I feel it, not exactly as it is expected to be. So I am now tagged as a world music artist, but the world is wide, isn't it? I still need to say who I am in this global perception. So let's keep on talking about musical identity and associated visual identity, which brings me to the following album, Zarabi. This time, <clears throat> I wanted to pay tribute to a group of women in the desert of Morocco, in Hamid al-Ghizlan. These women, they create pieces of art in the shape of rugs made of recycled clothes. Inspired by them to build up this hairdress, I braided my hair with shreds of melhfas. For those who don't know, the melhfa is the everyday female outfit in all these desert regions of uh, the Sahel. The melhfa is also, for me, a kind of second skin, because this is what I do wear when I'm on stage. Anyway, the photo on the cover of Zarabi has been perceived in a different way for the simple reason that this outfit and this hairdress has never been seen before. Although it seems familiar, nobody could really link it to any part of Morocco, and for the good reason that it doesn't come from a single part of Morocco, but from many, according to my perception. Musically, this album is 10 songs recorded in the Moroccan desert, yes, but not especially inspired by any Hassani or Saharan music. 
Sarabi is just one more collection of sensations that have crossed my being while I was writing the songs. Sarabi is another nuance of who I am. My musical identity is still under construction, and it's up to me to identify it beyond the culture in which I was born and beyond other people's expectations of that culture. Today, I'm about to propose a new album, Deba. But before that, I would like to say that Today, my building is here. I've built it using what I've been given and what I've chosen. I've created it with the models that inspired me. Today, I'm choosing for this new album's cover a visual devoid of any clues of territorial or cultural belonging. I will have no melhfa, no scarf, no accessories. In Daba, I am my hair, my skin my look, my words, my music, now, here, and anywhere. So Daba is the actual expression of my identity and the look of my building after 40 years of construction. One more time, this building, I have built it using what I've been given and what I've chosen. I've built it, I've created it, inspired by many models. And today, I'm asking myself this question. Inside my building, isn't there a real me that exists regardless of what I've been given, regardless of what I've chosen, regardless of any model? My essence, free of any conditioning. Today, I want to listen to that voice. I want to trust that instinct. We are the builders of our own identity and the explorers of our own buildings. I have decided to accept, welcome, and love my roots, my foundations, but to make my own choices. I have decided to be okay with who I am, not to be afraid of being different, neither of not being the same all the time. I want to be active in this creative process. Today, I am inviting you to listen to that inner voice, to trust that deep instinct, because I'm sure it's the real you. Thank you. <laughs>